I love the look of vellum. It can be high maintenance, but man, the results are pretty. And I've got a ton of techniques for ways to use vellum on your cards, as well as the absolute, without a doubt, magic way to adhere that vellum to your cards without that glue being seen. It's true. Let's go. So this vellum is 40 pound vellum, very thick. Uh, so great for die cutting, dry embossing, those types of things. It's very handy. It's also good vellum for when you are going to heat emboss, which I'm gonna show you here as the first technique you can use with your vellum. There are thinner vellums on the market. They're more transparent, so more see-through, and those definitely have their pros. But for all of the cards and techniques I'm gonna use in today's video, I'm using the 40 pound vellum. So this is that Debbie tool I used in the last video. A couple people asked to see the bottom of it, so here you go. I believe this is felt. So I inked up an oldie, it's called The Good Life from Penny Black with some embossing ink from Wow. And put it, you can see it in the light. It's clear, obviously it's embossing ink. And I'm gonna use a couple of opaque embossing powders from Wow. Uh, these are kind of like a granular mix. So there's like chunks of gray and white and pink and all that stuff. This one is called Fizz, I believe. These are old, I'm using what I've got. So I don't know if these particular embossing powders are still around, but they're from WOW, so check out their website. They do ship in the US, uh, or see what you've got. Maybe you can mix your own together. Do it in a separate container, but mix a couple embossing powders together and see what kind of mixes you get. So I'm gonna go ahead and heat emboss this. Let your heat tool heat up. Tip number one for heat embossing on vellum, make sure it's good, heat up 30 seconds. Constantly move your embossing tool. Heat from the front, heat from the back. Flip it around, keep it moving. Uh, other, that way your, your paper won't warp. This is very fine, high maintenance paper is what I can say. So as long as you keep that tool moving and because I'm using 40 pound, it does make it easier. Uh, you can heat emboss on your vellum. Just keep it moving, flip it around, flip it upside down, keep it moving. And then you've got a good embossed image there. Ain't that pretty. All right, so technique number two for what you can do on vellum is you can ink blend and add some color. Flip the paper over. You are doing this from the back side of your design. Don't do it on the front, do it on the back. I'm going in, I have so many different blending tools, so I'm using all different kinds. Use what you have, use makeup sponges, use whatever. But uh, I'm going in with some Catherine Puller ink. All of the inks I'm using will be linked in the description below for you if you wanna know what colors I'm using. And I'm just inking from the back side. I'm not taking too much care. The ink sits on top of the paper because it's vellum, so you can see my fingerprints all in there, so I have to go and smooth that out. Like I said, vellum is high maintenance, but it's worth it. I try to dry it a little bit as I go, so I'm not constantly putting my fingerprints into the paper. Uh, but uh, I just blend, blend, blend. The darker colors you use, the better. Then on the back side, again, I'm always working on the back side of this panel here. I'll add some water flex. Look how it picks up. It is so cool. The Catherine Puller inks are water reactive, but it's especially beautiful on vellum. And uh, that can kind of cover any imperfection you have, maybe from ink blending, but it just gives this really pretty look. See, I had a little splotch here, so I'm just going in with some water and covering that up. Then I let it dry. Let it dry before you move on. Technique number three is how the hang do you adhere vellum? This is how, this is some sticky tape from scrapbook.com. It is four inches, so it covers almost the entire width of your standard card base, which is four and a quarter by five and a half. This stuff is sticky, but it's invisible. It's magic. So I'll peel off the backing, which is the hardest thing of all for me, is just peeling it off. And then I'll go ahead and adhere it down and you can't see the glue for nothing. It's just not there. This is very sticky glue. So you need to commit to where you're gonna stick it, but this is the best glue I have ever found for vellum. It is friggin' amazing. I love it. And uh, let's go ahead and finish off this card right here. This is a word die I pulled from my magic mug. I've got a piece of tape there that I'm just kind of putting I'm gonna tape it down on the top side of the word die. It's gonna work as a handle, but also as a mask. So I'm gonna take my embossing pad here from WOW. I'm gonna swink it. Surely you know what swinking is by now, right? Uh, right on the bottom there, and then I'm gonna add some more embossing powder. Another blend, chunky blend of different colors and granules and all that stuff, but it's so pretty. And now I've got this dipped word die. 
That's what I'm calling it. Dip, baby, dip. Woo! Here's my favorite glue. Never going to change it up. Had it for, gosh, a year and a half now. Whenever it came out, I got it. And here's a look at this card. Look at all the shine and the beautifulness. And because that vellum, you can see through a little bit to the bottom of the card. You can see the glue. Love it, love it, love it. Another technique you can do with vellum is dry embossing. These are some 3D folders from Alta New. Uh, I got them when I taught a class for Alta New on 3D embossing folders. So I've had them for several months now. They're just, they're great. I love them. So I'm running them through my cuddle bug. I use a Gemini Junior die cutting machine, but I can't put that on camera. So I'm using my cuddle bug, which I got, oh my gosh, like 15 years ago off of eBay. That was my first die cutting machine. And running that through, I'm going to use the Buffalo plaid and also this Daisy bed 3D embossing, whatever. The names are in the description below in the supply list if you care. Uh, so I'm going to run that through. You've got to figure out what your embossing sandwich is for your die cutting machine. For me, on this machine, it's the A plate and the C plate. That's it with the embossing folder in between. But look at, look at this image. You get the front, you get the back, whatever floats your boat. It cuts great on this 40 pound vellum. If you use thinner vellum, it probably would crack a little bit. You get a little, maybe some tears because the paper is so thin. So do keep that in mind if you're going to try to do some 3D embossing. So for this, I'm going to flip it over on the back and I'm going to use these three colors, Rouge, Grape Crush, and Bay Breeze and ink blend the bejeebies. Just, there is no rhyme, there is no reason. I am not blending, I'm. this looks like one hot mess. But when you flip it over, that's kind of where the magic is. And you can see I'm using all different kinds of blending brushes. I really don't feel like <laughs> the blending brushes, you know, there's so many different kinds on the market, but if you don't have any uh, makeup brushes, those have been around forever, you can grab those, blending wedges, beauty wedges, whatever. So when you flip it over, it's so gorgeous and it's like magic. It's like it's all blended and I just adhered a word dye from my magic mug and that's it. Bada bing, bada boom. All right, I've lost count of what number technique we're on, but here's another technique uh, for using vellum. We're going to use some alcohol markers. Now I am not uh, good with alcohol markers, so I have very few Copics and they're like dried out, whatever, but I made it work. They're old, had them forever. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to ink this up with some black pigment ink. It's pigment so it stays wet longer, so I am able to heat emboss this, doing it the same exact way, sprinkling on some clear embossing powder, and then I'll go ahead and heat set this. Again, flipping your paper up, down, left, right, keep, it, keep your tool moving. Uh, I do want to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. You guys know I'm a huge fan. I learned a lot from Jane Davies. She is the one who got me into watercoloring animals. Her class is fantastic. I can't recommend her enough. Skillshare is a platform that offers, God bless, whatever you want to learn. It's probably on Skillshare. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get one month free trial of Skillshare so you can check it out and see if it's your jam. So here are my super dried out Copics. I am again working on the back side. Uh, I went ahead and heat embossed the front side and I flipped it over to the back and I am just scribbling like no one's business. This looks disgusting. It looks like a hot mess. Doesn't matter. Keep it rolling. Now you can use any kind of alcohol markers you have. Um, these are Copics. <laughs> Look at that brown, like nothing even came through. It's so dry, but I ain't getting any more markers. I'm using these. I mean, this looks like a hot mess, but don't worry. When you flip it over, it doesn't look this bad. I promise. That's why we're working on the backside. I even tried to do blending with the Copic blender. I do have a refill for that, so that one's juicy, but uh, yeah, there ain't no blending happening. I even tried to do some shading. Eh, whatever. Anyway, try, try, try. It doesn't really matter. When you flip it over, it really looks pretty. Now, one of the good things about vellum is it's transparent, so you can actually see like the shading of whatever card base you use. So this is a good time to maybe pull out some of that colored cardstock you hoard. I'm just saying. So again, the magic tape here, peeling it off, slapping it down. You can't even see the glue. And uh, here I just, you know it, slapped on a die cut from my magic mug so all the like pen marks and stuff from the alcohol markers i think it looks cool it really does now this is my favorite card i mean i'm not trying to be biased but this is like absolutely my favorite i saw this on youtube um i don't know some stampin up demo was recommended on my home screen and i watched it 
And she did this, and her name is Linda, and I cannot for the life. There's like 50 billion Stampin' Up! demonstrators, so I can't find her again. But Linda, pretty sure that's your name. This was amazing. I had to try it myself. So I've got this wolf. By the way, I love wolves. I think they're so cool. It's like a silhouette stamp from Catherine Pooler. This, again, is old. It's like a year old. I stamped it three times on this piece of vellum. It's just cut to the width of a standard card base, so it's four and a quarter wide. And I stamped it three times. And then I'm using this to kind of put the little dash lines of where their feet are gonna go. So I can, so I used it like a little template. So I can stamp this very quickly onto some white cardstock. Again, cut to four and a quarter by five and a half because I'm boring. So I'll go ahead and ink this up with black Nocturne ink. It's pigment ink, so you know it. I'm gonna sprinkle an embossing powder and heat set it. I also heat set the wolves on the vellum, by the way. I don't think that was in the video, but I did go ahead and do that. And then I'm going to erase the pencil mark. You don't want little pencil marks on your card, so make sure that you remember to erase them. And then I'll do, oh, I did die cut this little circle die from some sticky paper. It's like full sticky, sticky notes. You know, had those forever too, found them in a drawer. And uh, to create a moon, and then I'm doing some very quick and easy ink blending to create like a sunset perhaps, like the wolves are gonna be howling at the moon and that's why I did that circle mask. I don't have any circle dies, so this one actually has a stitched, like little stitched edge around it, so it's gonna be a funny looking moon, but whatever. So uh, look at that, that's pretty cool, right? You like that? And I'm kind of removing the, I don't know why I did that, I didn't even need to remove it because I need to flick on some water. This is regular uh, cardstock, this isn't watercolor cardstock by the way, it's just white cardstock, probably Nina, solar white. And uh, now I'm gonna move to this. This is the only time in this video that I am working on the front side of the vellum, all right? This is the front side, not the back side. I didn't flip it over and you'll see why in a minute. So again, this is the only time I'm working on the front side. So I wanted to go ahead and put some Bay Breeze ink on there, then I'm gonna flick on some water. Oh, I just love how water works on this vellum. It's probably the vellum tied with the ink, I don't know, but it's just really neat. Again, those wolves were heat embossed and clear embossing powder, both of them, on the cardstock and on the vellum. So I peeled off the circle moon. You see my little dash lines, whatever. Uh, so I added a little bit of ink blending on the moon so it wasn't so stark white. Then I'm gonna go ahead and put that tape on the vellum front side, because why? I'm gonna be using the back side. It's gonna be a reflection. So again, in this whole video, this is the only one I'm working on the front side of the vellum because it's gonna be like a mirror image, like it's a reflection. So I'm flipping it over and using the back. I just confused you. Let me explain. I put all the ink blending and everything on the front side of the vellum because I adhered it flipped over on the back side. So all my work was done on the front side, including the glue. I hope that makes sense. Anyway, just look at this card. It is so stinking cool. The wolves howling, the reflection of the watered vellum. I love it. All right, and the last technique, technique number I don't remember. This was the Buffalo Plaid 3D embossing folder we did towards the beginning of the video. I went ahead and cut this down, put it at a little angle, and did the sticky tape, so I sticked it down. These are butterflies that were left over from my last video. It was a video on how to use a butterfly stamp five different ways or four different ways, I can't remember. I'll link to it in the description. But these were left over, so I put them in my magic mug, so I was able to pull those out. And I'm gonna go ahead and adhere this down using my favorite little glue. By the way, this glue is never clogged. I have never had a glue that's never clogged. And I've tried a lot of glues. I did the runners and they would even clog. The runners would even clog. Like it would all goop up at the end. This glue just doesn't do that anyway. All right, so I've gone ahead and glued my little butterfly down. And of course, all my dyes, sentiment strips, word dyes, they all come out of my magic mug. So it really makes pulling together the finished product of the card with the sentiment super duper easy. If you don't know what video I'm talking about, I'll link that in the description below as well. I probably should do a dedicated video on my magic mug because the video where this magic mug was pretty much invented on the fly uh, is a time-saving hack video. So. <laughs> so here it is, all these cards, what do you think? Do you have a favorite? Do you like vellum? Tell me, tell me, I want to know in the comments below. Let me know what you think. Thanks for joining me. Be sure to subscribe, click the bell, do your thing, and I'll see you next time.